product of three consecutive positive integers is equal to 56 more than the ooh, wow is equal to 56 more than the cube of the first integer what is the largest of these integers all right so how we want to solve these problems is basically write them out as a expression okay so the product of three consecutive positive integers so this can be represented as x as that first positive integer and then a consecutive integer is x plus one right we're just adding one to that and we want to find the product of these three integers and therefore we can write this as x times x plus one times x plus two all right this is equal to so we're going to write it equal sign 56 more than the cube of the first integer number we denote the first integer as just x and so the cube of the first integer is x cubed and that is 56 more than this value all right so what is the largest of these integers so we can just find the value of x and we find the value of x add 2 to it that would be the largest of these integers x times x plus 1 times x plus 2 this simplifies to x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x and this would be equivalent to x cubed plus 56 and so if we subtract x cubed and 56 from both sides what we end up getting is 3x squared plus 2x that's an ugly minus sign plus 2x minus 56 would be equivalent to zero so now that we have this expression all we have to do is find the zeros of it you can just plug this into desmos it will give you two solutions one of them is a negative solution and is also not an integer, so that is not it. But the other one you'll find has an intersection at the point 4, 0, which indicates that one of the solutions, or the positive solution to this expression, would be x equals 4. And so we know x is equal to 4, and so now we can just take this. We know x would be 4 plus 2 is 2 after our first integer. That would be equal to 6, and so the largest of these three integers must be a value of six our choice to pick is answer choice d all right let's move on to our next set of december sat predictions for the math section this one says in the diagram below line cd is a tangent and line eo is a secant if arc ab is 60 degrees and the radius of the circle is seven units what is the length of secant eo pause the video try the problem on your own so the, for this problem let's first look at what is given arc ab is 60 degrees and by the way there's multiple ways to solve this, this is just my way if arc AB is 60 degrees, so this arc right here is 60 degrees, well, then we can just extrapolate that this angle AOB is also 60 degrees. Okay, cool. So, the next part, what is given? Well, it says the radius of the circle is 7 units. Well, guess what? We have the center O to any point. This line AO literally is from the center to the outside point of the circle. And therefore, that is 7 units. And we could say the same thing for BO here is 7 units, but... That's not going to be really super useful besides determining one other thing, as we'll see later. So what can we do now? Well, first off, we know that this is 60 degrees, right? So I'm looking at this right now. I'm looking to see, like, there might be a triangle in this. So if I take green and I take this green and I label it, like boom, 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 boom. Well, guess what? That is a triangle, okay? And whenever I see 60 degrees and triangle, I think, hmm, is there a special white triangle? And there is, because watch this. Let me switch back to my pen. We can see that from this line AO is really from the center to any point on the outside of the circle. And then guess what? Line CD is a tangent. And so that creates a 90 degree perpendicular angle. So this is 90 degrees. Oops. So that is 90 degrees. And well, guess what? There's 180 degrees in a triangle. And so this last angle right here, triangle, uh, sorry, angle AEO is going to be 30 degrees. So now we have a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And if we draw our triangle right here, this is on your reference sheet. So let's say this is 30 degrees. This is 60 degrees, and obviously the last side is 90 degrees. The shortest side is going to be opposite of our 30 degree angle, and so that is going to be denoted as x. And then our longer leg is going to be across from 60 degrees. That is going to be x times square root 3. And then our hypotenuse is just 2x. Now watch this. We want to find the length of our secant EO. Well, guess what? Our length of EO right here, well, that is just the hypotenuse, right? Because we know, we can see we have a value of 7 for the radius, that is across our 30 degree angle. And then what is across from our 60 degree angle is side EA in our triangle. And so 
we don't really care about that, but that would be, what is that? Because x, right, we know x would be equal to 7 based off this. That would just be 7 times square root 3 on this side. But what we really care about is the length of secant EO. That is just double 2x. And so if we take double of 7, that's just 14 as our final value of secant EO. And that is the answer to this problem.